Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the second Gifts and Decorative Accessories Magazine webinar. Uh, this is part of our series on retailer professional development, and it's all designed to help uh, the business people in the gift and deck industry be more successful in their jobs, and uh, that's always a good thing. I'm Warren Schulberg. I'm Editorial Director for Gifts and Deck, and I'll be the moderator for today's 60-minute uh, session. You've already done the hardest part, which is uh, signing up and, and logging in, so we appreciate that and hope it wasn't too hard. Uh, we've got two really knowledgeable, experienced speakers for you this afternoon. I'm going to introduce them in, in a minute, and there's going to be ample time for your questions and comments as well. So let me just get a few bits of housekeeping out of the way. Uh, during the presentations, you're going to be on mute, uh, but you'll see a panel on your screen, probably on the left-hand side. That's where you can type in questions, or if you're having any technical issues, you can type in uh, 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 asking for help there as well. Uh, no one else is going to see what you type in, and so uh, that sh that's a great way to uh, connect with us. Uh, if you miss anything on the webinar or need to refer back to points in the presentations, you'll be glad to know that after we're done today, you'll get a link uh, via email that will allow you to, to view this webinar again on demand. And of course, there's no charge uh, for that. So that's our housekeeping. It's all pretty uh, self-explanatory. I think we've all uh, done a couple of webinars. So let's get started. Uh, today's topic is social media and how to create the perfect posts. And we all know that there are plenty of people talking about this subject today. But we also know that there are plenty of that, plenty of people out there that really aren't experts. Well, we've got two experts for you today. The first is Christian Kratzis, who is digital marketing manager for Snap Retailer. The Snap Retail. He's been helping the independent retailers and other small businesses with social media, email marketing, and online advertising for years, and has got some real hands-on experience, including managing these areas for several well-known gift stores. Christian knows his stuff. He's going to be joined by Christy Moss, who's the owner of Christy Boutique, uh, a Pittsburgh specialty apparel store that in less than two years has become one of the city's premier women's lifestyle boutiques. And she credits uh, much of, of that success to her social media activities. Christian and Christy are going to do a webinar duet for you this afternoon with lots of practical, real solutions to the problems that gift and home stores face in social media. And again, don't forget your questions. We're going to have plenty of time to get to them uh, after the presentations. So that's where we are. Christian and Christy, the screen is all yours. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Warren, so much for the introduction. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I'm really excited to be part of Gifts Index series. I know you guys are really looking for some knowledge, and I, I commend you all for finding the right place to get it. So today we're going to talk about the anatomy of the perfect post. And Warren did a good job at introducing me, but I want to give a few little points about my background. Um, I, am, I do work for Snap Retail. We are involved with uh, working with small retailers to engage their fans on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, social media, and email marketing through easy-to-use software. I've been working for Snap for about three years and been, been kind of working with smaller businesses on their online advertising strategy on marketing and, and things around the online world and marketing. There's a picture of me on the right with my adorable little niece. Uh, she is, I'm a big family guy, uh, big into into dogs, big into music, book lover, traveler, technology nerd, just to give you a little bit about my personality. And if you want to ask us any questions or connect with Snap Retail and look for some, some more of our education, we're across the board on all social networks and you can find us just uh, our handle, Snap Retail, no spaces. So enough about me. We are, Christy is joining us today. She's a customer of ours, and she has a really, really awesome women's boutique outside the city of Pittsburgh. So, Christy, could you give a little bit of background about yourself to our listeners today? Yeah, sure, Christian. Hi, everyone. My name is Christy Moss. Um, I'm the owner of Christy Boutique. Um, I've been with SNAP for about uh, one year. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, so born and raised, and I don't plan on going anywhere. Um, I have a background uh, education in public relations and marketing, and I've always known that I wanted to open a women's boutique, so I truly am um, living what I've always wanted to do. 
we're really all about our clients here at Christie Boutique, and SNAP has really allowed us to further our relationship with our clients on a daily basis. Um, we have learned quickly um, that social media and email marketing are critical to our success and growth, and we are constantly looking on ways to improve upon the two, and SNAP has really been, um, honestly, the best way to do so. So that's just a little bit about me and the store. Awesome. Thanks so much, Christy, for the kind words. So I actually had the chance to go visit her store and film a little feature on her, and she has she really has her stuff together, not just from marketing, but from the look, the feel, the the um, community around her store and everything. So I'm, I'm really happy to give some examples from different social media tactics that she is implementing. So we're going to kind of go through this presentation. I'm going to give you some, some best practices. I'm going to follow up with, with some of those examples, that, that real-life examples from retailers like you as well as Christy. I'm going to have Christy kind of talk to those points and how they're working well. So basically, I put this together because I've, I've seen a lot of retailers, a lot of small businesses like burning through tons of hours trying to distinguish their content across various social networks. So there are so many right now. We have Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, they, they, and more pop up um, as the years go by. And they also change. They, they're constantly changing. And this is really to help you um, kind of not waste your time, basically, to put it in simplest terms. So. I'm going to go through Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest specifically, and then we're going to show you some examples. So let's start off with Facebook. And this is actually based off of an infographic we created. I'm going to give you a link at the end where um, you can actually go to find more resources like this. But we'll be going through this, and then this should, the, the infographic should guide you along the way. And the first thing I want to talk about are just that plain text status update on Facebook. Um, you guys are probably familiar with it. It's just if you're going to your business page and you're, you type up two sentences and post it. You don't use an image. You're not sharing a link. Um, you're not posting an offer. It's, so it's just that plain text update. So you can see a little example of one here on the left. And I will mention that these right now they're not doing extremely well in the news feed. They're not g gaining a ton of engagement. Um, but the way that Facebook changes all the time, you could see this change in the next couple months. Uh, just about six months ago, status updates did really well, and Facebook's changing their, how their newsfeed works to display more images and links. So I'm going to go through this one pretty fairly quickly, but it's still important to know that it's an option for you and some best practices around that. So one of the first items here is to include a call to action in that post and keep that right in the beginning of your post. So something that's actionable, that tells your customers what to do, um, come into our store for our new arrivals, or, or join our mailing list to learn more about so-and-so. Something that is, is telling them what they want to do, put that in the beginning of your post. And then you want to keep it short and sweet. You see this example here on the left, how, how short it is, and, and I mentioned one to two sentences, even three to four. Keeping it short and under 250 characters gains the best interaction. And there's a little fun fact under here on um, the second part here. It says emoticons make your posts personal and encourages additional social interaction. So using those little smiley faces and hearts and wink faces, it sounds so silly. And I get, I get weird faces from people when I'm, when I'm educating this live, and you're probably doing the same across your screen. But it's actually shown that you will receive 33% more comments, and you'll get a lot more shares. And this is based off of a lot of small businesses' pages from an American Express Open study. So next time you think about posting a quick little post, such as, our hours have changed for summer, here are new hours, come in and visit me, smiley face, it puts, a, it puts more personality to your post, and it actually is proven to receive better engagement. And then signing off as the owner, making it personal. You don't have to do this with every type of post that's short and sweet and, and text only. But if you're, if you're getting across this quick little message and your customers know you by name, or maybe they don't know you by name, but you want to really put a, a face to your store and you want to humanize your brand, you want your customers to, to know who you are and know the staff behind your store and who manages your social media, just give a little quick... What I do for Snap Retail when people ask questions on our page, I'll answer them and then put dash Christian, just showing that, hey, I'm the one answering you and it's not somebody else from the team. You're familiar with me, so I'm talking with you directly. It's a great way to put a face with the, with the Facebook post 
and make it more personal. So that is just a quick little rundown of some best practices and tactics. Let's jump into some examples here. So it's really easy to illustrate this um, after I explain it. And some of these are a little bit blurry because I took some screenshots and they're pretty small text, but they do a good job at getting across uh, all the best practices that I just went through. So here's one short and sweet and that call to action, and I'm abbreviating it as CTA. So call to action is abbreviated CTA. It's kind of just a, a marketing term, and all of you guys are marketers because you're looking for all this great information and education. So use that CTA in the beginning of your post. Come in today and automatically be entered to win a Nebraska scarf. So something as simple, as short, as sweet as that, it's actionable, and it's also actually tying into a contest, which is pretty cool. It's a one sentencer. It's something you can get out to your Facebook page if you're really busy, and that's what these status updates, these text-only posts are good for if you're pressed for time. Here's another one that makes it personal without kind of signing off as your name. If you hear like feedback from your customers or someone says that they love your storefront display and they actually came in because of it, or somebody compliments you on your store, ask them, hey, can we quote you on that and put it on our Facebook page or tweet it out or make a visual graphic of it and put it on Instagram? Something as simple as, uh, this is a customer of ours, heard in the store, oh, I'll be back, meaning like I had a great experience, I'm definitely coming back to the store. Um, that is something, again, it's even less than a sentence. It's something short, sweet, quick, it's personal, and it's just a great way to get across one of those quick status update posts. Here's one I just grabbed literally five minutes before I jumped on this call. I had um, our director of customer service send this to me. He, he was like, he said, wow, check out how many comments this post got. It might be good for a presentation. I told him I'm putting it in right now. So. I did mention that text posts don't always do so well on Facebook when, it's, when they're put against uh, great images and links. But here's a great example of a giveaway. They're saying, fill in the blank for a chance to win a $20 gift certificate. The number one song on my road trip playlist is, and they put a blank. And they have, they have tons of comments here, 43 comments. This page doesn't have a huge following. They're getting 43 comments, 12 likes. Um, it's a text-only post. There's no images, no links associated with it. And it's something that's highly engaging and something that is going to get a lot of people to your page. And then I want to point out, so obviously Christy's here on the call with us. She's doing a lot, a really great job with images and links and visual content to her, her Facebook and other platforms. Um, I did kind of dig a little deep. You can see this one's from January. But I do want to mention one of her text-only posts. And I'm going to, I want her to chime in here with, with some feedback on on why she sees these, um, that she's not using them so much or how they could work for other retailers. Basically, she's just putting, we are open today, come and stay warm, it's nice and toasty in here, and we have lots of, of tons of winter sale items. So, so, Christy, would you be able to chime in and kind of talk about why you're getting a little bit more visual and how maybe these types of posts still can work for other retailers? Yeah, sure. Um, like Christian said, we use this type of post less often than we use a text with a photo um, to complement it. But we do, I do like to use these posts just to kind of do a little one-liner, let them know, hey, we're still here, um, kind of just to get in front of them and hopefully um, make them see us, get in their minds, and get them to maybe you know, come in when maybe they wouldn't have before. Um, we do tend to use pictures with the text more, I would say probably 90% of the time. Um, we just find that if we can get the product in front of them and they can actually see what it looks like, they are more inclined to either come into the store, comment on the post, like the post, and we tend to get a little bit more interaction that way. But I do still think that these um, posts do help. I think it's good to kind of do a combination of both and see what works best for you, maybe more photos and less this, but that's just kind of our experience with it. Awesome, great insight. And I'd like to kind of echo what she's saying in that when you're really showing product, um, images are obviously the best way to get that across. When you want a quick little message, maybe it's about your store hours or something you're only doing 10% or less of the time, these could be something that you can quickly um, schedule or post live. So that's why I kind of want to be quick on the text post. I'm going to talk a little bit longer on the link post and then image post. But again, here we have link posts on Facebook. They're a great way to get your, your customers engaged. A big photo now shows up here. 
Um, before there was a smaller thumbnail, you get a lot of information from the source that you're linking to below. And at the top, you could still put that short and concise uh, text. So similar to the text post, whatever you put up here in the top, as long as you're clearly explaining what your customers will find when they click on the link, that's going to be a best practice for you. So if you're posting a link, and I'll show you some examples, maybe it's to some press or to a blog or to a, a source of recipes or fun activities going on in your community, as long as you're short and concise with it and tell people exactly what you'll find in the link itself, you're going to get a lot more clicks, a lot more people going through to that link. Another quick tip here is to trim that long link, that long URL. I see a lot of, and some of our customers are guilty too, but a lot of small businesses will post that really long link up in the status update, up in this box up here. So you'll see like www.christyboutique.com slash gift slash this slash that, all these numbers and letters where it's a really long link, and I'm not calling, I'm not calling you out, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> but just to illustrate, that's, if, if you guys know what I'm saying, it's just a long link, you can, you can either take it away, you can actually post it in the box, this link, this link will show up, the image and then the information below, and you can actually delete the link once this pre-populates here. So um, sometimes I get a lot of surprise faces with that, it's just a simple, uh, quick thing you could do, post the link, and then this will uh, show up in about a couple seconds, then you can just delete that out of the box there. Or you could use something called Bitly or TinyURL. There are these services where you can just kind of chop up your uh, URL so it's really short. Um, and then you can keep it up there, too, for somebody to click on. And again, I'll show you some examples. Um, explaining best practices and showing examples I found is just the best way to kind of get this across to you. And then your, your uh, photo here. It will pre-populate a photo, but make sure it's something that is associated with the link itself. So let's talk about some examples. Here's a great one, short and sweet, little message up here, great image. If you want to know the size and you want to know exactly the image that fits perfect in here, it's 400 by 209 pixels. But as long as you have a big image on that page that you're sharing the link to, um, it should show up. So this is a, a customer of ours sharing something they're selling from their Etsy page. They obviously have photos on their page, and then the, this shows up really nice in a link. People can click through that link. You don't have that long link up here in the, in, the, in the post itself. So that is a good example right there. Here's one I just took from Christy. I was actually really excited to see this. Kudos to you and your store. But they were, they were featured in, in the press. So um, I, I want to mention that it is important if you're featured in the press, if you're on, in a magazine, a local magazine, if, if whether it's a small blogger or a, a nationwide, nationwide press, kind of tooting your own horn and giving yourself a pat on the back um, shows your customers that you're a reputable source, you're a great store in their area, and you're actually, you're not going away. You're a store that's here to stay. So, uh, Christy, could you share some, some reasons why you think kind of talking about yourself in press or, or a post like this is, is special for your business? Yeah, sure. Um, this actually happened yesterday, so this was perfect timing. Um, but there's a little segment um, called Rural Wednesdays that they do um, on our news station here every Wednesday morning. And they featured us yesterday, some of just our summer fashions. Um, and we decided we found the clip online yesterday, and we just posted it onto our page to try to you know, kind of let everybody know that we were on there. And as Christian said, I think as retailers, it's kind of hard. We don't want to like toot our own horns and you know, say, hey, look at this. We were on this news station and da-da-da-da-da. But I think it is really important, as he said, it puts you in there with that class of retailers that's here to stay and very um, adamant and professional about what we're doing. And um, I see that he, after he pulled this, we got a couple more um, comments on there. And some customers posted really nice comments about the store. And so it got to more people then. And we, I think we got four new likes today um, just based on, on this news post. Um, so it gets kind of your customers talking about positive things about your store, um, which I think is really, really good because what could be better than one client saying positive things and possibly picking up a new client based on that. Um, so this always works really well for us when we kind of share things from a magazine or a, a TV um, station or something like that. Perfect. Again, I was, it was, I did grab that last night, so I'm sure you guys got some more engagement, but 
it was pretty cool to see that, especially because I got it last night and I knew we had this call today, so I thought I'd put it in there. So here's another one that is a little bit different. I still consider this a link post, but it's basically an event. And the reason why I consider it a link post is because you can take the link to your Facebook event, drop it in that status box when you're posting from your page, you're scheduling out content, and then it'll show up like this on Facebook. And I like to point this out because this kind of changed a few months ago, where right now you have a nice call to action button right here to join. So if, you, if you're creating an event, um, if you post it on your Facebook page or you just, just create it, it will show up to your audience and with a little button to, to join. So whether or not you get a lot of RSVPs from the event, I've actually had mixed feelings where people will have an event that goes really, really well, but even though they, they created a Facebook event page and they only had 10 RSVPs, you still get a ton of people showing up. Yeah. Some people just don't really join, like, RSVP to this. So would you, would you be able to add any feedback on that? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. If you see here, it says four people went on ours. Um, our experience with it is exactly that. We don't find that we get a lot of people to join or to RSVP, but we do find that putting the event out there like this on Facebook gets more people into the store. So this particular trunk show, we ended up doing really well, and we had a very good day. Um, but if you looked at you know, how many people are SVP'd, you wouldn't really think that. But a lot of the people that did come in said that they saw the event on Facebook. They just didn't bother to, to join or RSVP. So I think that it's still really, really important to do, even if you don't have a lot of people joining. They're still seeing it and coming. Exactly. All good points. So I want, I'm going to flip through that one and come to um, sharing your latest email campaign. So. An email campaign, if you're, whatever software you're using, you should be able to pull a link from it where, you're, where your email is basically a landing page. So if you're taking the time to create that email and you're, you're probably spending some time on it, you should take that and repurpose it. And this is just showing um, the importance of repurposing. And uh, I, I talked to Christy about this last night, and she has some good insight on it. Would you be able to share that with them? Yeah, sure. Um, this is one of the ones um, we did back in May, and we were having a um, Hudson Denim sale. Um, we decided to do it kind of in the middle of the week. And every time that I um, create an email on Snap, which is I send about two to three per week, but every time I do, I always post it to Facebook. Um, I don't think there's ever been a time that I haven't gone ahead and posted it to Facebook simply because some of our people who are not on our email list are on Facebook and vice versa. So I feel like if, as Christian said, if you go to the time to create the email, which is the, the part that takes the most time, you've already got it created. So it takes an extra maybe one or two minutes to just go ahead and post it on your Facebook page and reach some people who you might not have reached um, just through the email. So we always do this. I think it's a really good practice um, to try to get into. I agree, too, and it, it kind of just to emphasize that not everyone is on the same network. Not everyone on Facebook is on, on your email and, and vice versa, and that's why I think that's important, too. I just wanted to show this example because um, it actually, so it's, it's, another, it's another event, and I wanted to show you that long URL up here. So they could have pretty much deleted this out, but this just kind of shows you that you know, this, this is a nice little paragraph here, but we have this long link here. Um, I think it just looks clunky, and it's actually proven that you end up getting less engagement having a longer link. And then I also wanted to show you that if you have, like, an event or sharing a link or some press about someone else, you can tag them, too. So this is just a local, um, a local record store that I follow, and they're tagging all different bands that are playing as well as some of uh, vendors for an event. So this is the last portion of Facebook I want to talk about, and it's the image post. Um, so we talked about text-only, links, and images. And, and Christy Boutique does really well with images. I'm going to show you a lot of ex examples from her right now. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's kind of just reiterating what was above. But basically, a short and sweet actionable message, a really great image. It could be taken straight from your smartphone, and you could it will still look very high quality and, and a good image. Now, if you have a flip phone, don't be embarrassed, but I, sometimes those images don't show up very well. But as long as you have a pretty up-to-date smartphone, that's all you need to share some really great-looking images. So let's talk through some of these different image posts. 
I want to point out this one. Uh, Christy does a lot of great kind of collages, and basically they're, she's not creating a collage. By posting these photos, it shows Facebook will rearrange them so it shows up really nice like this. So would you be able to kind of talk to some of your um, product image galleries you've been posting? Yeah, sure. Um, as Christian said, this looks to me like when I see this in this collage like this, it looks like it would be really hard to do. Um, I'd think, well, how do I get the pictures to look like that? Um, but honestly, it's, it, it's really easy to do. We tend to, like I said before, we tend to do a lot of images, really heavy on images. Um, and for this particular post, we got a whole new line of jewelry in. Um, so we really wanted to get as much um, at, of it in front of our customers' faces as possible. Um, so we simply take the pictures, upload them to Facebook, and it, it does. It puts them in this nice little collage. They all look great together. Um, and we tend to do this. Um, it's, if you see on the screen, it's very small and a little bit hard to see, but it says nine photos. Um, so we tend to, and I haven't seen um, where this, I don't know how many photos is too many, but a lot of the times if we get a big shipment in, we'll put maybe as many as 15 photos kind of all in one post. So once they start clicking, they can just kind of click through, almost like a little album of pictures, and they can see you know, everything that we may have gotten in that day. And I think the more pictures you include, the more likely they are to maybe stumble upon one or two products that they might really like that would in turn get them in here to see other things. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, the pictures, the collages, I think, look very much more involved than they actually are. Um, it's actually very, very easy to do, and what we find to be the most effective for us. Awesome. It's, it's, it was actually, for me, it was actually great to hear it straight from the retailer, because when, when I advocate the use of images, it's a little bit different. But it's nice to say, you know, you, you have a shipment, you have the content and product to take pictures of. The more you put out there, the, your customer is more likely to find exactly what they're looking for. Now, too much variety is not good, and we all know that. <laughs> This is one that I, I thought was pretty creative because I want to talk about how the way images can complement your copy, your, your text-only post. So if I just saw blue is the hue we love with no image, I might be a little bit confused. Well, <laughs> obviously, or I would know, okay, Christy loves blue. I don't know why she's saying that. <laughs> but I thought this image was a great way to depict the message. And um, if you're able to talk to that, I know you do a lot of these types of posts too, one image posts. Yeah, we do. We do a lot of one image posts. Um, and like Christian said, I think just to do like a little one-liner, something that's kind of catchy, that's fun, that's lighthearted, um, that's not really like selling them something. I think, you know, a lot of the times we have to be careful that we're not jamming product down their throat. Um, and this kind of is just like real cute and catchy and it's just, um, it's very appealing, I think. And I didn't actually know that the emoticons were inc gave you more chance for people to view your post. Um, but I, I found that out yesterday after talking to Christian. So we just happened to include one um, in this one, which I'm glad we did. Um, and we do use them quite a bit. I just, I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, these one-liners in one picture, I think, is just a really quick way to kind of put text with a complementing image and just get something out there that's going to stick in their head and they might, you know, if it's catchy, they might remember it. Awesome. Great advice. I'm going to flip through some of these just because I, I have a lot more content. And I, I wanted to get to this image contest. So um, I've seen Christy do these a lot. She has 45 comments on this one, which is huge. And I, I, I think I actually grabbed this screenshot. Um, she may have even had, had more comments afterwards. But can you, can you tell everyone how these work out for you guys? Yeah, sure. We actually just started doing these maybe um, in March or April. So I think we've only done maybe about four or five of them. Um, I actually got the idea from my dad, who um, is in the furniture business. Um, and he had done a couple and seen major success with them. So we decided that we were going to try to do it to see how many comments we could get on our page. Because um, people, you know, always want to try to win something. Um, so we just raffle off like a $25 gift card or, you know, whatever it might be that, that you want to give away um, in a contest. But we usually give them, like, from, we open at 10, so we usually give them one day um, to kind of put their guess in and comment and respond. And it's as simple as guessing the number of marshmallows 
um, in this jar to win the $25 gift card. So I think we got, I think we had like 70 um, some comments by the time that this was wow. actually over. And it was mostly people who like haven't been in the store. Um, so we did get, I think we gained on our page at least 11 or 12 new likes just from doing um, this post. So it's really a way to get out there and get somebody who maybe doesn't usually look so much at what you're posting or um, you have a hard time getting in front of. I think this is a really good way to do it. And a lot of people do um, share these as well sometimes. So you're getting you know, a lot more interaction. And it's very fun. And again, it's not, you know, it's giving them something and not, you know, selling, selling them something. So I think it comes off really nice to the, to the customers, too. So we found these to be really fun and work really well for us. Hey, awesome. Christy, it's, it's, it's Warren. I think the most important question is how many marshmallows were in there? Yeah. How many? <laughs> <laughs> I think there were like 382. To something like that. Tammy, who is my assistant, she always gets the wonderful job of counting them all. <laughs> so, awesome. Everybody says, do you count all those? I said, oh, sometimes I do, but she got to count these ones. So I think there were like 380 some in there. Well, nice. that's great. I, I, I think we're just going to take a, just a quick 30 second break for, uh, for a little quick message from one of our sponsors and then um, Christian and, and Christy will be back uh, and just want to make sure that there, we leave enough time for the other social media um, uh, 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 sites and that, um, and that we have time for question and answer. So just watch this little uh, quick 30 second message, please. For over 20 years, Evergreen Enterprises has supported the advancement of independent home, garden, and gift retailers with a wide variety of functional and decorative products, as well as in-store merchandising solutions. Contact us today to see how we can get started. Okay, we told you it would be quick. Um, <laughs> I'm going to turn it back to, to Christian and, and Christy, and again, just want to make sure we have enough time to cover the other, uh, the other applications. We've got about uh, 15 minutes left before we need to go to the questions and answers. All yours. Perfect. So this is the first time we've actually, I've done something where, where I'm going in tandem with a, a retailer in, in some of my content. So I'm going to flip through some of these slides so we can get on to a couple other social networks. Um, but again, we'll, we'll cover anything in the questions, and I shared with you guys a lot of great examples, a lot of things that you could take to, tonight start and begin posting. I mean, something like that contest you, could even, you can even do in your store. So I want to talk through Twitter, and I'm going to be quick on this because lately I, I've, had a, I've been talking to a lot of retailers where they're telling me that a lot aren't using Twitter, and I still think it's a very, very valuable tool depending on where your audience is. And, um, and Christy actually mentioned a, a great little comment last night about, you know, just being where your audience is. So I'm going to have her mention that, too. But right now, I'm going to go through just some best practices if, if Twitter is something you kind of want to jump into and, and work with a little bit. So basically, Twitter is a, a quick, easy platform, um, something that's similar to those Facebook text posts I was talking about, where you can just get across a quick little one-liner sentence. Um, one of the things you can do to get a lot more engagement is ask for people to retweet your content. So you may have seen this before where people say RT or retweet if you're all about shopping local. That's an example here. So something like that gets people to retweet your message, which if you're not familiar with Twitter, it's basically like sharing your message on Facebook. So you're getting that in front of a, lot, a, a larger audience. Another kind of best practice here is to to keep those tweets short, and obviously you have no choice because you only have 140 characters, but if you're sharing a link, you want to make sure you shorten it. And Twitter has an automatic way of, of shortening a link, so you can use their service, or you can shorten it with another service like I mentioned earlier, uh, Bitly is one of them. So Bitly will allow you to shorten and do a small link, and there's an example there. And then Talking about hashtags, um, hashtags are super powerful on Twitter. They're very powerful on Instagram, too. I don't see them gaining as much traction on Facebook and, and Pinterest right now. They're still effective, but 
Twitter is an important network to use a hashtag. And it's as simple as uh, down here I have a little box. And I'll even read it word for word to explain it a little bit better. Um, you just put a pound sign in front of a keyword. It could be a short phrase. It could be something a little bit longer, nothing too long. And I wouldn't use any, any uh, one-liners unless it's, it's pretty descriptive. Um, try to use it as a phrase, as a search term. So um, if it's coming up on, if you have back to school items you're selling, you could do back to school sale or graduate gifts or hashtag shop local. It helps you appear in search a little more often. And there's a fun little stat down here that 20% that of retweets include at least one hashtag. So it gets, it gets people to reshare a little bit more. So I said I'd talk about this fast, so I'm just going to go through some quick examples. Um, I talked about shortening your link. Here's an example of a retailer's website that already has a short link. So, Christy, I think yours is just christyboutique.com. Is that your yeah, site? that's it. Yep. So, so that would even be short enough where you could just share in a tweet. You wouldn't have to shorten that anymore. And then I want to mention that um, Christy Boutique doesn't use Twitter as, as, as often as, as Facebook and Instagram and some other networks. But I wanted to show an example from hers, and maybe she can talk a little bit about, about why she's not using it as much. But basically, images are going to show up a lot bigger in the news feed. If you're scrolling through Twitter, you'll see this big image now instead of having to expand it. And that's just why I wanted to kind of drop this idea in there to you. So Christy, why would you say like you're kind of not getting away from Twitter, or you just you just want to focus your time on the networks that are bringing the best return? Yeah, I think that's exactly it. Um, we did use Twitter um, a little bit more um, in the past, but we were finding that a lot of our um, customers were not on Twitter, so it was kind of um, not the best use of our time to try to constantly be in front of them on Twitter. Um, so we do focus our efforts mostly on Facebook and email and Instagram. But I think if you are a store that has a large customer base on Twitter, that it is just as valuable um, to get yourself familiar and to get on Twitter. Um, I think it's you know just as valuable. It just kind of depends where your customer is. I think you have to go where your customer base is. But I do think that if you do use Twitter, what we've found in the past the two things that are the most critical is to have a call to action, um, something that you want them to do, whether it's retweet or come in the store or something that you want them to do because of your tweet. And I think hashtags also are really important. Um, it just gets you in front of more people, which I think is really um, the point of, of doing Twitter. So that would just be, I guess, my little tidbits on Twitter. Great. Well said. And um, just really going where your customers are is, is what's most important. Here's another one uh, asking for retweets. This is Shop Small, a good resource for small businesses. But um, that is an example of that RT, that abbreviation I mentioned quickly. Here's another um, example of kind of adding value. And this one's from Christy. But again, it's kind of back in January. But I still, I still wanted to show it because it's, it's adding value with like a special offer. She has flash sale, two days only. Um, I'm not sure if, if Twitter got you any traction for that sale or if that's something you put across other networks, but it's still a good example. Yeah, I think, I'm sure we probably put it on Facebook and um, email too, but you know, like I said, I think Twitter is you know, just as good if that's where your customer is. Perfect. And, and if, if you're using it on other platforms, too, it's kind of like a way to even repurpose some of your content, shorten it up, repurpose it, if your audience is there. So this is just showing, um, asking questions, get some replies. So if it's something as simple as a quirky holiday, like National Donut Day, like what is your favorite donut, or today is National Take a Hike Day, are you a hiker, um, something asking, asking questions is a great way to get more replies. So let's cover Pinterest fairly quickly because I want to leave at least 15 minutes here, and I know we might go over a couple minutes to get some questions from you guys. But in a quick, in a nutshell, um, I'm not going to go and explain what Pinterest is, but I want to talk more about the pins itself. So a pin is just a visual piece of content, a picture of your products, an image of you and your staff happy in your store with your customers, um, a recipe, but also with that recipe, an image of the dish. Um, it's something that and just another venue to get 
your products and your lifestyle in your store in front of your customers. So one of the most important things here on a pin is to, to have everything linked somewhere. And I have that up here in this first box. So link strategically. You want to link a pin to an optimal source. If you sell online, you absolutely need to link to your Buy It Now page. Um, but if you're just a, if you're brick and mortar only, you're, you're thinking about e-commerce, that's okay. You can link to your website. You can link to your latest email landing page because most likely it has your latest sale, your latest products, whatever seasonal. Um, and then also your store information in it too. So if I'm on Pinterest, I'm pinning a picture of your, um, your desert boots to a, bo a fashion board of mine and I'm, I'm ready to, to buy a couple, I'm going to click through and if I find your website then, and it's in my area, then I'm more likely to visit you. So I'll talk about how making that a little bit more local too. This next one, I won't read through it, but basically in a nutshell, longer, more vertical images do a little bit better with engagement and repins on Pinterest. It doesn't mean you could still kind of repurpose those square photos. You could repurpose photos you took on Instagram. But just keep in mind that if you have like a more vertical display, um, things such as like, like a full outfit display or something, that will work really well on Pinterest because it's more vertical. And then down here in your description, um, you want to make sure you're including keywords and phrases that people might be searching. So if they're searching for a specific summer dress or some sort of accessory or a piece of furniture made out of certain materials, include all of that in your description. Because when they're searching that on Pinterest and even on various um, search engines such as Google, Yahoo, and Bing, your pins will show up a little bit better in search. It's just a great way to get in front of more people. So let's quickly blast through some of these examples and then we're going to take some questions. So here's a, here's a good example, and I talked about keeping it a little bit local. So people in Pittsburgh, you call them Pittsburghers. So uh, Christy says, hey, Pittsburghers, have you had enough of the rain? Not us. Why? Because they have a lot of cool stuff for you to wear in the rain, obviously, in summary. But saying, hey, Pittsburghers, calling out the location and also encompassing, encompassing that message with a really great picture of um, her, her items as well as some of her display in the background, that's a great way to keep it local, and it's just good content for Pinterest. So, Christy, I don't know. I know we're running out of time here, but I don't know if you want to give a quick comment on that type of post. Yeah, like I said before, I think maybe for this one, something that's different is putting like two different products that complement each other together. Um, whether it's putting an outfit together, whether it's putting um, a thing of stationery with a pen display, um, I think it's kind of nice to, for people to see things. Um, working together, and also anytime you can get in the local lingo or anything like that, I think it just brings in a sense of community, which is really good. Perfect. Here's another one um, that I wanted to show that you can take a lot. Of, Pinterest is a lot about textures too. You can go on there and see a lot of close-ups, or if you type in leather or like lace or something like that, you're going to see a lot of. Uh, close-ups and textures. So you can take really close images of something, and, and this isn't extremely close. It, it's still a great image in showing some of her store. But I could even zoom in on that pattern itself, or if you have something with patterns or attention to detail, the, um, Pinterest is a great way to kind of sh show off that detail. I wanted to show this one because it's, it's an Instagram image. Um, I believe this is a customer of, of Snap Retail as well, where they're kind of the, they're using a filter to kind of black out the background a little bit and, and, and show more of the actual product they're trying to get across here. So you can repurpose some of your, your filtered images, your Instagram images. This one really quick, it's a portrait image, vertical images. I said those do really well, so this is what I kind of mean by those vertical images. Um, I love this photo, but uh, so you can even put the, if I don't know if these are in a display, but I, I would suggest even put products together just for photos. So you can talk to that, Christy, but what I wanted to mention is that she's using some good keywords here as well as, as a little part of us um, getting her sale across. Yeah, we actually, um, we arranged these for a photo um, the first time we wanted to post them, and then we actually have left them like that, so they're still like that because it's kind of a fun way for them to see them. They can see all the colors of the sandals. Um, so we actually have left them like that on the floor, and people have even commented that, that they do like the display. Um, but yeah, this post works well for us. Um, I think it's just, again, like 
playing up the having fun and the 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 different displays because that's you know why they come to us because we're unique and local and different. Um, so I think this is a good way to do it too. Cool. It's good to hear that your a social post inspired us toward display even. <laughs> I wanted to show this fairly quick because it's basically a, a DIY project, a do-it-yourself project. Um, even though that might have nothing to do with your store, it still has everything to do with your customers if that's what if your customers are into that. So if you have a lot of moms shopping at your store, you can do projects for moms and their kids around the house, crafts. Um, this is kind of just showing that you can use other content instead of just your products. And then this is the last one I want to share, and we'll jump into questions. Basically, those really inspirational messages, um, and actually, pulled, Christy, I pulled this last minute from your stores board. I'm not even sure if you knew that, but it's a, a quick inspirational message. Um, those do really well on Pinterest. They get a lot of repins. People collect those on a lot of different boards, so that's just something else to kind of incorporate with your products. You have some, some other sources like recipes, DIY things, and then, and then some inspirational messages, and those, those also do really well. So for the sake of time, let's jump into some, well, I have some action items because your brain is probably killing you right now. I spoke really fast because she had a lot to add. But um, basically, flying through this, include call to actions, be personable, be, um, show the com share your community, talk about your brand, but be personal. Trim long links. Don't, don't use a lot of those long links in your content. You can complement image posts with actionable messaging, and don't forget about keywords and phrases in your pins. I believe this is going to be recorded, so you guys will have access to it. I'm, I'm not positive. Um, Warren will chime in with that. But I, I, again, I want to thank you guys for your attention. You can get more resources from Snap Retail. We just launched. I actually got a text in this presentation that our resource center was launched. It's this huge initiative we're doing to get a lot of educational content to both our customers and just retailers alike. So it's just snapretail.com slash resources. And I do want to call out that Gibson Deck, is, they're, this is part of a series. So they have an upcoming webinar. Um, you can learn more information from that URL. But they've been great partners with Snap Retail. And all of our customers have nothing but great positive things to say about them. So definitely keep up on this education. But um, Warren, if you could chime in with some, some questions that we have. And Christy and I will be happy to answer them. Okay. Well, that is great. That's terrific information. And yes, there's a lot to take in. So um, everybody who has registered and has on this call uh, will get an email in the next 24 hours that will give them um, a link to, to log on and uh, view this again or be able to pick up anything that they want. So um, again, lots of terrific information. And uh, it's available, uh, it will be on our site and available to access. Uh, once again, we, we've got some questions in. But if you have questions, that little panel, again, on the left side of your screen, just type it in. And uh, we will take them as they come in. So we've gotten a few. And um, let me start. Uh, Christian, the first one is for you, which is, um, you mentioned, obviously, um, uh, uh, Facebook and and Twitter and uh, Pinterest. Um, what do you think about Instagram? Is that is that something that uh, businesses in in this in this industry should be getting involved in? Absolutely, and I I don't have it included in this presentation because again this is based off of an infographic we created and didn't put an Instagram in it. I kind of want to do that in the future, but I love Instagram. I think it is perfect for retail because it is highly visual, just like Pinterest, and it's it's strictly mobile. You could view some things on desktop. You don't have all the features. But as a retailer in my store, I can take my phone, I could snap a picture of a product, post it to Instagram in just a, not even a minute. Um, I don't even have to put a description on it. So your customers just might be there. It's another social network. It's mostly um, younger people ages 35 and under. But it's still growing demographic uh, 35 and, and up. So. It's highly visual. I love it. It's a great way to reach people, and and it's just that new and exciting network. Um, I obviously would focus your time and effort on where your customers are. And I don't know. So Chris, if, if you, go ahead. Yep. No, go. I'm sorry. Go, Christy. I know Christy uses it. And I just wanted to see if she had anything to add from uh, her perspective of the network. Yeah, we use it a lot. I would say I probably use it every day um, to post um, products from the store. 
it makes the products look so good. You can put different filters on there. Um, you can post them. And like Christian said, I just take them on my phone while I'm in the store, upload them, and people are on their phones all the time. So I find that I get actually a quicker response on Instagram than I do on Facebook. If I post something, I find that people start liking it a lot quicker, um, sometimes in like a minute or two minutes. Um, so I think, and I think it's because people are constantly have their phone there and they can just scroll through on their phone really fast um, and, and see all your pictures. And I think it's a really, really, really great tool for retailers. Okay. So, and, and we know that uh, retailers uh, also have day jobs of, of running their stores. So um, if, if they had to pick uh, two social media vehicles uh, that they should focus on, Christian, what do you think? Uh, my, my advice is start with Facebook. Facebook has the majority of Internet. Is it, people, 90% of the Internet actually has a Facebook account, which is just insane to me. So most likely you'll have a big chunk of your customers there. We all know that Facebook, is, you know, the, the way their news feed works changes in the way your customers see your content, but you're still getting in front, even if you get in front of 10% of your fans, you're still getting in front of those people for free. You have paid options to reach everyone, and again, just re reiterating that a lot of your customers are going to be on Facebook. And then the second choice, I would look at where your customers are. Even ask them. Ask them on Facebook. Ask them in the store. Um, look at the demographic that shops at, in your store. And I would really say Pinterest or, or Instagram. They're really highly visual. They're perfect for retail because you can make your products look really great. And um, they're quick. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. It's not inundated with ads yet. I will say yet because they are coming and they are there and some on, on those platforms, just not as much as Facebook. But uh, Facebook number one, and then choose your second based on feedback, based on the shoppers at your store and demographics. I okay. Um, <laughs> Christy, does that make sense uh, from your angle? Yeah, that's exactly what I would say. Facebook for me would be number one, and Instagram would be number two, just because I think they're more direct um, to retailers. They make our stuff look good, and they're quick, easy, and get to the most people. Okay. Uh, next question is for Christy. Um, uh, the images that you're posting on 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 these various sites, you're you're photographing those in your store with just a, with an iPhone or just a smartphone. Yes, I have never taken any picture with anything other than um, my iPhone. So I just you know usually keep it with me out in the front of the store, and I take pictures of you know things throughout the day. Um, but yeah, they are not professionally taken. They are not nothing like that. They're just snapped very quickly on my iPhone. Okay, and that seems to work great. Um, okay, uh, next question is back for Christian. Um, is there a best time of day to post content to Facebook or to any to any of the sites, and do they differ as to uh, as to a different time or a different day of the week? Good question, and I get that a lot, and I, I, I like to point everyone's attention to their Facebook insights first. So in your insights of your Facebook page, you can actually see when your customers are on Facebook and what time of the day, the day of the week, um, and you can get a lot of information that way. So your insights are located at the top of your page. When you click on that, you can go into the likes of your page, which um, navigating around, you're able to find best times of day. It'll show you a little chart where... Monday, it might show that 500 of your fans are online. Tuesday, there's a little bump. And then you might see Thursday, a ton of your fans on, are online. For whatever reason, they're there. And then you can look down at a chart below, which shows you every hour of the day, which is really cool. So you'll see a huge drop at like 2 or 3 a.m. Um, and then, well, hopefully, your customers aren't awake <laughs> there. And then you'll see a bump. <laughs> you'll, you'll most likely see a bump starting around like 9 a.m. Um, we look at our page and we see that we have the the peak is kind of at 10 a.m. I guess most retailers like I pay our page. I guess you, I guess you retailers are sleeping in. I don't know what that means, but um, we see a bump around then around lunchtime. We also see a huge bump in that graph around like 7, 8 p.m. So maybe you guys are getting back from your stores, you're spending some time with your family, and then you're jumping online again because you guys need to get your marketing out. <laughs> and um, 
just look at that graph. That graph will tell you a lot about how your where your customers are online, at what time they are online. And that's from Facebook specifically. You can even kind of take that and, and use that knowledge for other networks. But aside from your own insights, just a quick little little um, fact that I could leave you with is that most engagement occurs around lunchtime in the or early in the morning and then after work. So again, or after work and dinner, so like six, seven o'clock, um, that's when rule of thumb kind of best engagement um, occurring. I don't know if Christy, you know like a time where you seem to get, even on Instagram, when you seem to get a lot of likes. I, w I was going to say the exact same thing. We're anywhere from like 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning, and then again around noon, and then from like 7 to 9 p.m. And we find for us that during the weekdays, people seem to be online more. I don't know if that's because they're online while they're at work <laughs> and they're not on the weekends. <laughs> um, but we tend to find that things we post on the weekend, even though we are open on the weekend, doesn't seem to get as many as much interaction for some reason, whether people are doing something else. Um, but same as Christian said, I, I would agree with that. And, and Christy, does it matter which, which part of the weekday? Is, I mean, do you get different results for a Monday or Tuesday or a Thursday or Friday, or that's We seem really to get a little matter. bit more towards the end of the week. Um, Monday and Tuesday seem to be a little bit slower, um, but towards, like, Thursday, Friday seems to be like our best days. I think people are thinking of the weekend, maybe looking for outfits. Um, I would say towards the end of the week um, is the best for us. Okay, okay. And and Christian, somebody's asking uh, about Twitter. Uh, uh, they got an impression that perhaps Twitter is not as strong a marketing vehicle as it might have been uh, a year or two ago. Is that um, do you get any sense of that? Oh, I don't. I don't want to say that I do, just because. Again, it, it depends. And I've heard this before. It depends where you, where your audience is, and there are a, a lot of like teens and tweens that are on Twitter all day long. That's like what they. That's what they use. Their parents talk about Facebook, and they're like, "Oh, mom, you're on Facebook. That's so last year." <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's it's not going away. I mean, it's not decreasing in users, and they're they're acquiring other little tools and platforms, and they're. Starting to integrate some more, some smarter advertising. It just, it really depends where your customers are, and um, you know, a great way to kind of gauge that is, is you can try it out. You can tell people from your email list, hey, we started a Twitter because we want to get really quick tidbits out to you, um, and then try using the platform. And you can't give up on it after a month or even two months. But you know, if if, if you're going through through four months, a couple quarters of the year, and you don't see any interaction. I would focus your attention to other platforms because, again, you, you guys aren't full-time marketers. You're full-time store owners. So focus on what's important to you and then, and then pick and choose the networks that work best for you. So I wouldn't say it's going out. I don't, I'm not going to say it's going out or, or it's not going to be around any longer, but I would say that it, it just depends where your audience is. Okay. Well, and because we know that everybody is uh, full-time uh, store operators, we want to be respectful and mindful of your time. So um, we're going to wrap it up here. Again, uh, in the next uh, 24 hours, you'll be getting an uh, email that will give you a, a link to, to log on and, and, and view this again. You can also check it out on our website, which is gifsanddeck.com. And we ask you to uh, mark your calendars for Tuesday, June 22nd, and that's our third in this series of webinars. That one's going to feature Liz White, who's owner of uh, the Mason and Madison gift store in Massachusetts, which uh, is, uh, is, is a terrific store if you're not familiar with it. And she's going to be talking about the wonderful world of merchandising. So thanks again to Christian and, and Christy, and thank you so much for everybody for, uh, for tuning in. We, we appreciate it. We appreciate your, uh, your readership and viewership of, uh, of Gifts and Deck. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great evening, and we'll see everybody next month.